Black Mirror Rucon is doing very well. But uh, as well as it's doing, can we at least be honest about a part of its success? First things first, uh, I'm happy to see Black Myth Wukong doing very well. It's awesome to see a new game from a new studio, unestablished, doing well. At last time of checking, on Steam, 2.4 million concurrent players was the uh, highest it had gotten up to, which is bloody gangbusters. It's absolutely fantastic to see. But I do want to be honest about, at least in my opinion, why Black Myth Wukong is doing as well as it is. So it's done well for a few reasons. It has got, it has had really damn good marketing. A lot of the trailers that have come out have been very nice. Gameplay trailers have looked very good. It's showing a lot of very nice looking boss fights. The uh, fact as well that a lot of people have at least believed it to be a Souls-like game is definitely going to make people buy it. A lot of people will buy a game if they think it's going to be a good Souls-like because people want more of that genre. So even though the developers have even come out themselves and, and said, we're not really making a Souls-like and I've played it and yeah, it's not really a full-on Souls-like. It's got elements, but it's not a full-on Souls-like. Um, people have still bought it thinking it is but they're not the primary reasons for its success in my opinion we also have to factor in that uh, it's a game coming out of China so I'm sure it's done pretty well in China but with all of that built in I still believe that a big reason as to why Black Myth Wukong is doing so well is because it has positioned itself either accidentally or on purpose. I think it's more accidentally, really. Uh, but I don't know. You can believe what you want. But I think it's positioned itself in a way where it is seen now as an anti-woke game. Now, the journalists definitely started this. And I've got very little sympathy for the majority of game journalists, to be honest. But I think it's time that we are all very honest about this fact. Games now, even films now, and other things coming out, but mainly games and films that come out now, and the directors, the publishers, the developers, if they come out with a anti-woke rhetoric, that is a marketing tactic. It's absolutely a marketing tactic. If a game comes out now and the developer just happens to go on an interview and says we uh we don't care what the journalists say we don't care what the wokies say we don't care what sweet baby ink say if they come out and say things like that then all of the regular people online will be like yes this is our game now i'm on board with this game this is it. We're going to buy this game. This game's going to do great. To so stick it to the libs. This game's going to do amazing. And I think you only have to look at sort of the, the track record of when this kind of conversation has come around the game to see that it does tend to ring true. A game like Dustborn, which has come out at the exact same time as uh, Black Myth Wukong, is doing terribly. It's tanking absolutely tanking and while i do think a big part of the reason it's doing so bad is because they brought the game out right alongside black with wukong not smart but also because in the run-up to the making of that game in the run-up to the release of that game the developers were talking about how the game politically is focused on 2016 They've made a very, very conscious effort to be incredibly diverse. They want to break gender roles and gender barriers. And there are a lot of gamers who generally just don't really want to hear it. I know that for people who are in the industry, saying those kind of things might seem like a positive, but I think you've got to look outside of your bubble because the majority of people 
I'm one of the gamers who are buying these games. I think the majority of us, we don't think like that. We don't really look at games like that. I don't look at a game and uh, if a developer comes out and says, this game is really diverse, that's not a positive to me. It's not necessarily a negative, but it's not a positive to me. It's not a selling point. And more often than not, unfortunately, I think it can actually be perceived as a negative because it sounds like, even if it's not true, it sounds like and gives the impression that when you are creating your game, you put representation and forced quota diversity in front of actual creativity and creating something that an audience would really enjoy. It just doesn't come across as a genuine way of making a game. It comes across more as disingenuous. It comes across as manipulative. It comes across as preachy. And I don't think there are... I don't think that's the way that people want their games to be perceived when they're trying to market them. And I don't think it's necessarily a wise thing to do. Now, I am not saying that I want politics out of games. I have heard people use that phrase, get politics out of gaming. And I think anybody who says that hasn't thought about what they're saying. It sounds good, but they haven't thought about what they're saying. I mean, for God's sake, one of my favorite gaming franchises of all time, and anybody who knows me will laugh at this because it's so obvious if you know me, but my favorite, one of my favorite game franchises is the Metal Gear Solid series. And you can't look me in the eye and say that the Metal Gear series isn't political. Now, I think the reason that a game like Metal Gear doesn't really get flack for it is because the politics are seen as a part of the story. They're woven into the story, for one. It's not the selling point. Nobody's buying Metal Gear because they're like, I'm going to support Hideo Kojima and his political views. No one's buying Metal Gear for that reason. They're buying Metal Gear because they really enjoyed the stories, they really enjoyed the characters, they really liked the stealth, they really liked the cinematic style. All of the above. They also like really, really long cutscenes. Me, I look, look, love a long cutscene. But you can do it. You can have politics in your games and political views in your games. Absolutely. And that is your right to do that as a creative. It's just that when you lead with something which is going to be fundamentally divisive you create a conversation around your game that is going to alienate people outright and i think there's got to be it's there's got to be now more and more developers and publishers who are becoming aware of this fact and so i do think it's becoming viable as a marketing tactic now for creators and developers to position themselves as anti-woke. And I think as much as people talk about how companies in the past and at present will push diversity, they will push having certain types of main characters and certain types of things in games um, to appeal to people who are left-leaning, to people who enjoy this kind of thing, um, but the companies don't actually really have any of those values. It's just the fact that that's the thing that makes money right now. I think we're going the other way now. I think we will see now a rush of games in the next few years that try to position themselves as the anti-work game. An anti-work game. Because right now, it feels to me that if a game does that, there's a very high likelihood that a lot of people online will react positively to it, regardless. Now, when the game comes out, it might get slaughtered still if it's not very good. You can't make a game and then have it come out and be shit. But I look at Black Myth Wukong and the conversation around it, and I don't think anyone's really being honest about the quality of Black Myth Wukong right now. It's a very good game, but I've played it. 
and I did have a lot of frustrations with the game. It's certainly not great, in my opinion. Now, I don't want to get it twisted. Black Myth Wukong does feel like a labor of love. It really does. There are some elements of the game where you can see that there has been a lot of care into that game. Some of the animations are brilliant, and that's fantastic. But there are elements in the game and gameplay that, for me, really do bring the experience down. For example, when I was playing, I got really, really annoyed at the invisible walls. There are so many invisible walls. Like, you will just be traversing the area, and then you'll suddenly just out of nowhere stop. You just boom, straight into an invisible wall, and it just breaks you out of the immersion immediately. Just completely, completely brings you back, and... It's not even always in sensible places. For example, you'll have one area where I remember there was like a pile of rocks and the pile of rocks were here and I was like over here. I was running up towards the rocks, but instead of being able to go up to the rocks and I don't know, walk, run up to the rocks and sort of stop at the rocks, I, was, it's, I stopped here. So I couldn't even get near the rocks. There was no reason, like it didn't look any different in front of me but for some reason there was like a meter of a gap where I couldn't go forward it's just a very bizarre invisible wall and that's not the most egregious type but that to me is an example of just very weird positioning of things like that and things that do absolutely start to annoy when you're playing it there were a couple of times when I thought I could go somewhere and I just couldn't. I just could not go that way. But no, it, there seemed to be no discernible reason other than the game didn't want me going that way. Which, it's fine. Making a linear game is fine. But you've got. I think you've got to do it in a smarter way than that. Um, it, it, it didn't feel good. But it's not just the invisible walls. I mean, there is a, a optional boss very, very early in the game called the wandering white if i'm not mistaken and this boss initially will kick your ass but remember people are going into this game and a lot of people are thinking it's a souls like game and if you remember in elden ring there was a optional boss kind of a boss at the start of the game with the who was on the golden horse, the golden the golden knight character, and he kicked your ass when you first went up to him. But what did a lot of people do? They went and they went at it again and again and again, and they fought it and fought it and fought it, and eventually they beat it. I could have killed him there, but I didn't. I'll kill him right here instead. Fuck you. Suck my dick. Because they're stubborn. Gamers are very stubborn. And they eventually beat it. And what happened? They got the reward. They got the golden halberd. Now, could you use the golden halberd necessarily? Not likely. Give me that fucking item right now. I want to see it. Put it in my goddamn mother... I can't use it. All right. But the point is, you could get it. You could get the reward. In Black Myth Wukong, people have beaten that wondering why i am not one of them <laughs> i did not beat it at the start of the game um i i ran away and i was like i'll come back to him later that was the way i approached it but a lot of people didn't approach it that way a lot of people approached it immediately and eventually they did beat the wondering white character and when they beat it the little thing popped up for them to be able to take and they couldn't claim the reward because the game wasn't expecting people to beat that boss yet. That is a flaw in the game. That is a problem with the game. You have to account for the fact that if you're going to put a boss fight, even an optional boss fight, in the player's way, there will be players who will beat it. And there just will be. And... 
to not have made it so that you can even collect the reward when you do that at the time either through you just don't think players will actually beat it or through lack of care i don't know but it's that's not that's not a good start for the game it's a frustration and yes you know there are there, like i said there are problems with the game and i think when everything simmers down when the conversation calms down with black myth wukong and knowing the internet that will be in about like a day I think people will start being more honest about what Black Myth Wukong really is, which is a very good game. It's a very good game. It's not a great game. It's not a fantastic game. And I definitely don't think it's the kind of game where we can look at it and say it's breaking records and doing so strictly on the merit of being a fantastic game. I think people hopefully can end up being honest and say, yeah, one of the big reasons Black Myth Wukong is doing as well as it is right now is because a lot of people are buying it and playing it. Stick it to the Wokies. And I've also, I mean, don't get me wrong, I've had a lot of people say as well, oh, the people who are anti-woke, the people who buy games just to stick it to the libs, it's a, it's a small audience. They're not, they're not important. They're not relevant. They don't really have a say in anything. I don't think that rings true. I think when you look at Hogwarts Legacy, you look at Black Myth Wukong, it's obvious that there is something there. And there is absolutely now a very viable marketing tactic where you can market your game as anti-woke and people will eat that up. And I think that'll be the way it is for a while until people get feel get sick of it they feel like they're being pandered to they're already being pandered to but a lot of people just haven't realized that yet but they will they will just as the same way that i think a lot of people who have realized that oh when it when a company come out and make a game and they say it's really diverse they realize they're being pandered to at the end of the day game companies don't really give a shit what you think all they care about is what is going to make them the most money and they will make that and i think it's up to us as an audience to be aware of that and to support games and developers and creators who are genuinely creating things that they want to create and not just creating things to pander to demographics and that's not to say by the way that's not to say that there shouldn't be a thing as target audience. That's very different. I'm not saying that. Target audience is one thing. Pandering to demographics is another thing. Everything needs a target audience. Everything needs a target audience. You can't appeal to everyone. That's impossible. But pandering to a demographic means you're not really wanting to create something. You're only really creating it because it's the thing that is safe to make right now that will make money and that's just the way things flow you know it ebbs and flows as time progresses it always does and probably always will uh but i think it would be good if people could at least just be honest about why black myth wukong is having the success it's having and uh i wish it the best but it is certainly not the bees it's not the best game in the world that some people seem to be trying to claim it is but it's a very good game and it kicked my ass because i'm not very good at games <laughs>